Hello guys, in this uh, video we're gonna explore and demonstrate you know, a tutorial for how to use a stack segment in the virtual memory of MIPS. So, as we said before in another video, uh, we, uh, you know, the memory uh, is divided into uh, multiple segments. One of them is called the stack, and here is the time to you know to know how we deal, how we can deal and the program with that stack because we're gonna use it again uh, in the future videos about procedures or how to use functions. So uh, the stack again is used when we exhaustively you know use the registers because you know remember we have only thirty two registers in MIPS in any MIPS architecture only 32, 32 registers so if you uh, run out of registers for example like the T registers and the S registers and A, A registers and you uh, these registers now hold some values that you cannot overwrite then one uh, idea here or one <coughs> idea is basically to use a stack so we uh, we uh, we store the current values of these registers in the stack and then overwrite the registers and then we write back you know uh, from the stack the old values of you know the registers so basically we use a stack in that case to store uh, temporary you know the register values then we can overwrite them okay let's see an example to show that Let's assume uh, that T1, register T1, register T0, and register S0, again T1, T0, and S0, hold some values, and these values are important for our program, and we don't want to overwrite them. At the same time, uh, we, uh, we want to, to do some calculations, these calculations, for example, in which we're going to overwrite the values in T1, T0, S0. For some reason, it's just a you know, a, you know, just like a very simple example. But maybe it, it's uh, in the future we're gonna see more uh, serious example that we really will do that. <clears throat> so, what we're gonna do here is basically uh, you know we're gonna reserve or book some uh, you know uh, uh, space in the stack that can hold these three values so <coughs> as we explored last time not last time you know, in a previous video the stack is you know uh, a top portion of the virtual memory and it grows downward so for example if this location here for example is 50 uh, and you know uh, this is for example the first location is 50 and let's assume this 50 is 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 a location in which we already write something and we want to now store something new to the stack so what we're gonna do we should refer or point to the next <coughs> free location which is 50 which is 46 because we go we go down go down means we subtract four so this will give us 46 so to point to uh, a new free location in the stack, we subtract four from the stack pointer. So the stack pointer points to the, the next free location in the stack. Points to, <coughs> I'm sorry, the last written uh, uh, location in the stack. okay then we store what we need then we decrease again store what we need decrease again store what we need and so on okay so when we start to write back we start to buy the last location we write so if you store a b c in that in that order this is number one this is number two this is number three when you read back, you should start from the opposite. Start from three, so you read C first, then you read B, then you read A. Three, two, one. 
So it's lost in first out life. Or you can say it's first in last out phylum. Okay, it's either one of the two. Of course, both are equivalent. Either life or phylo, same concept. <clears throat> so, again, let's go back to our example. We have here three registers that contain some important values for us, but we want to use them in our calculations. So, we're going to store their values to the stack. Okay, so in that case here, let's assume that the stack is, you know, uh, stack pointer is, uh, you know, is pointing to some location, 50, for example. What we're going to do, since these are three registers, so we need three locations. Each location is four bytes. So we're going to decrease 12 from the stack pointer. So add immediate stack pointer, stack pointer, minus, so this is basically SB equal to SB minus 12. <coughs> so after this, the stack pointer will be locating to, uh, at 42 or I'm sorry, uh, 38, location 38, <coughs> because 50 minus 12, according to our example, will be, will give you 38, okay? Then, we store T1 at, uh, uh, at a location SB plus 8, so we store T1 here. SCB plus 8 will give us 46, which is basically the first free location after the old, loca the old location uh, or the old value of SCB. Then we store T0 at SCB plus 4. This is SCB plus 8. This is SCB plus 4. So this is T0. Then we store SC0 at SCB plus 0, which is basically SCB. So, which is basically 38 here. Yes, zero. And the stack pointer now is, whole, is, 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 is you know, uh, is pointing to 38. <coughs> then we did our calculations. We overwrite T0, T1, T2, or I'm sorry, S0. And, you know, uh, now we want to read back our, uh, you know, our, uh, our values back. The original values of T1, T0, and S0. So, again, the concept of first in, uh, last out, we uh, load word uh, S0, SB plus 0. So, we read this one here. Then we load word T0 for SB, which is SB plus 4. <coughs> then we load word, you know, uh, T1, 8, SB, which is SB plus 8. So we read back T1, okay? Then, since we we are done with the stack now and we read back the, the values, we should unreserve, unbook, or free the three booked locations. So we, we should bring back SB to 50, or basically add 12 to it. <coughs> of course, again, guys, don't look at that example and see why we why we care about t1 t0 is zero you know this is just you know a simple example it's not representative of any application you know but in the future we're gonna we see more uh, we're gonna see more serious examples in which we have to do such thing so let's you know stress you know uh, uh you know here is just some animation to show you you know what's gonna happen basically what is the many steps of the program so let's stress about the concept of last in, first out, or basically first in, last out. Both are the same of the stack. So let's assume this is the original position of uh, SB at location 40. This is uh, the last location in which we have some important data in the stack. This is basically the same, ex exactly the same example that we see in the previous slide. But I'm, I'm, I'm just to want to show you the concept of first in, uh, first out. I'm sorry, first in, last out, or last in first out so first since we have to store three look three uh, values in the stack 
So this is 12 bytes, so we should uh, decrease this 3 by 12. So, <clears throat> uh, then we can store basically uh, T1 at, you know, uh, at location 3060. So, uh, if we already, uh, originally at 40, we, the SV will be at location 28, so 28 plus 8 will be 36. Then we can store T0 at 32, then S0 at, you know, uh, S3 plus, uh, at <coughs> SB plus uh, 0 which is 28 then we overwrite you know uh, these three registers and here is you know how we do the load back or the write back you know the uh, the registers again and finally we return it to you know the original location how about what's written here <coughs> so in these locations there are values written you know so these become irrelevant values. These become like dumb values, random value, values that you don't care anymore. So you can write, uh, overwrite them in the future. Okay? That's basically, you know, how to deal with a stack. In the future video, we're gonna, you know, start dealing with procedures in which we're gonna use a stack a lot. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.